I think we can all remember the first time a video game scared us. And for most kids in the 90s, it usually involved one of these. A dead one! What you got? The PlayStation! No! You're joking, me. And this game, Resident Evil. And my personal story went like this. I was staying over a mate's house and his mum said we could rent one movie and one video game. So, we go to our local video shop, Rest in Peace Moonlight Movies, and the game we chose to rent was Resident Evil. The sun goes down. We pop the disc in. The title screen and opening movie alone was already enough to make us shit our pants. I'm controlling. We hear the gunshot. The door animations make my stomach jump into my throat. The footsteps give me goosebumps. We walk down the other end of the room, through the next door, turn left, and I think you know what's next. I throw my controller on my mate's lap. He starts screaming, how do I run? How do I run? I then lunge at the PS1 power button, turning it off. Our hearts beating out of our chest, and I turn to him, and he says the immortal words. <sighs> Wanna play Frogger? But if there was one genre back then that could strike fear into a gamer's heart as much as survival horror, it was the genre we called Girl Games. And the girl game of choice today is Mary-Kate and Ashley Magical Mystery Mall. Not Mary-Kate and Ashley and the Magical Mystery Mall. Not Mary-Kate and Ashley in the Magical Mystery Mall. Just Mary-Kate and Ashley Magical Mystery Mall. Good. The Olsen twins was everywhere back in the 90s. I mainly knew them from It Takes Two, starring The Gooch, Kirsty I Still Would Alley, and of course, The Olsen Twins. It's a great 90s movie, and introduced me to the Sloppy Joe. I also watched their TV show, Two of a Kind, on the Disney Channel. And they were money-making machines. This is our company, Jewel Star. Mary Kate and Ashley have the Midas touch. Together, their names have become a billion-dollar brand. More than a billion dollars. Very own fashion line at Walmart hauled in four hundred million dollars last year. A, a, a fortune close to a billion dollars. Is that about right? So let's see if their game is a hidden gem or a shit sprinkled with glitter. Okay, let's start. Ah, uh, nothing better than being at the mall on a rainy Saturday. There's nothing better than being at the mall on any day, Mary Kate. Good point. Yeah, good point. That's exactly where we need to persuade our young, impressionable audience to be. At the mall. Rule our merches. This is our company, Jewel Star. So, they find this necklace and the owner makes her entrance. Here comes the owner. Good day, girls. I see you found one of my most special pieces. <coughs> Ugh, whatever. I'm not paid enough to do, you know, this voice thing. Hi, we were just admiring this really awesome necklace, but it's probably out of our price range. You know, today I can make you a great deal on that. No, really, it's pretty old and missing a few of its gems. Really magical gems. So, what do you think about five bucks? Oh, what a deal! So we're not going to address the whole missing the magical gems thing. Just, oh, it's missing some gems. Some really magical gems. Five bucks. Excuse me. For your information, you kind of have to be careful. Don't put those two pieces together. Oh, don't put them together. You mean, like they just were, four seconds ago. So MK Ultra and Ashley don't listen, and immediately put the two pieces back together, casting a spell over them all, turning everyone and everything into stone. We're majorly sorry. The jewellery chick then goes on to explain that there are five missing magical gems and five open stores. Complete each store's challenge and collect the gems and reverse the spell. Without the gems, you're stuck in the mall forever, with no money to buy a thing. <laughs> And it's a girl game. The mall acts as a kind of hub world, if you can even call it that. Even by the year 2000 standards, this was pathetic. Two years before this game, I was exploring Spiral Mountain and Grunty's Lair. Three years before this game, I was exploring Peach's Castle. But this works fine. 
All the cool places are closed. The software store, the movies, the arcade. But oh, thank God, Fash is still open. And it's a girl game. You try and close, put on a fashion show, take some catwalk pictures, and if they're good enough, you, you win a gem. Get me out of here! So we get our first gem from Fash and head into Lizzie's diner. Okay, look, you gotta get a gem. So listen up, this is very simple. Keep the customers happy and make the right amount of money by the end of your shift. Easy, huh? It's just a monotonous food serving game with stiff controls. I think that sign sums the whole thing up pretty well. Two gems down, three to go, and we enter Catch a Wave Surf Shop. Hopefully surfing. Okay, the word on the beach is that you two are best buds with the two new lifeguards. Any idea how that rumor got started? Um, nope, that's a new one. I don't know in what time and space they've spread this rumour. I thought we just entered the store and I haven't even begun to wrap my head around why we're at the beach. I thought we were stuck in the mall forever. So the jewelry lady tells MK and Ashley that people will believe they are best buds with the new lifeguards if they take some pictures with them. We have oh my God, this is going to be so much fun. Where's the camera? Okay, whoa, slow down. Let's get these instructions right. Now you can't take a million pictures, you know, so use them wisely. Oh, and here's what the boys look like. Cuties, huh? That looks like something they found in a shoebox under Michael Jackson's bed at Neverland. So it's not surfing or anything cool like that. We're just stalking some young boys, one of which has restless leg syndrome, and the other looks like he should be in a fucking bell tower. So you press circle to send out Mary Kate or Ashley. I really don't know or care at this point. She stands next to them and you take some pictures. <laughs> what a believable photo that's gonna make. Here's me and the guys, acting completely normal. It's a girl game. Yahoo. Honestly, this goes on for far longer than you want it to. I don't care how much you like stalking. The boys become aware of what Mary-Kate and Ashley are doing, imagine that, so they start hiding and the game goes full Scooby-Doo for a while. Just out of curiosity, what are you two doing? Um, they are stalking you, taking creepy fucking pictures. We need some good pictures of us with you guys. Whoa, dude. We're sorry. We've been majorly messing you guys up. Yeah, come with us to the lifeguard tower and we'll get you some shots before we start work. Change of plans. Run for your fucking lives, Olsen twins. So we take a few last photos for the gram and get the third gem. And I need a palate cleanser. Oh yeah, that's better. Two more gems to go. Wow, this game is just packed with content. Stage four, store four, is just say snow. <laughs> and finally, we get a bit of action, snowboarding. We get to pick our snowboard and our opponent. Quick tip, if you pick anyone other than Jeff Rocket, you're gonna lose. And talking about being careful what you wish for, fuck me, this is the worst snowboarding I've ever experienced. The controls are stiff, but all of a sudden highly sensitive. I have no idea how to successfully pull off any sort of trick, and sometimes jumping alone is enough to wipe out. Yes, that was totally cool. Yeah. There's no point doing any tricks. Just pick the slowest opponent, make sure you get the flag boosts, and get the fuck out of there as quickly as possible. If you do well enough in each stage, you get a bonus token ooh, that you can take to the bonus boutique in exchange for more clothing, dance moves, special effects, and backgrounds. Or you can just spin and lose your bonus tokens, just like real gambling. I managed to unlock the bonus disco dance stage, which is in Music Nation, where I need to go to get the final gem. And in this stage, we have to make a music video. So pick your dance moves, pick your track, and record your performance. Then submit that performance to the producers, which makes you watch your performance back again with progress bars in the four corners of the screen, letting you see in which areas your performance is lacking. Camera, dance, effects, and overall. If they're not impressed, which they usually always are, you have to re-record another performance and watch that shit back again too. It's so fucking tedious. R1, R2, L1 and L2 trigger special effects. Square changes your dance moves and the D-pad controls the camera. 
Now I also unlocked a special effect at the bonus boutique. So if I press circle, music notes drop down from the ceiling. Wow, a little on the fucking nose, don't you think? But if I hadn't have unlocked that special effect, I would have had no reason to touch the circle button, which, when held down along with any direction on the D-pad, gives you a completely new set of camera angles, which is never explained in the slightest. And the camera bar is the hardest one to make any progress in. So if you don't accidentally stumble across this trick, good fucking luck. This is so much harder than it looks, the graphics are horrible, it sounds awful, and sometimes Mary Kate just disappears. Where the fuck is she? Oh, she just warped through the floor real quick. Does that count as an effect? So I only just make the cut and get the final gem, which triggers the end cutscene. A truly horrifying experience, wouldn't you agree? And growing up with three sisters, yes, count them, three sisters, I feel sorry for them. And I think it's unfair that games specifically aimed at them was nothing but empty, shallow product placements with bad gameplay, graphics and controls. I think the girls deserve better. And so did they, because there's always playing my games. Hey, wait, can I interest you two in anything else? Thanks, but I think we're going to stick with buying clothes. Yeah, it's a lot safer. I guess. Well, have fun. Thanks for the necklace. And your help. Best friends forever. Good day, or good night should I say, Boner here on LA's Up All Night Halloween Special. More from Games in the Attic next week. Coming up next is something that's sure to send a chill down your spine. It's GameSpot's Grand Theft Auto 5 review. Because there's nothing scarier than people using video games to push their political agendas. So stay tuned if you dare. And we'd like to say a quick thank you to our sponsor, Pen. Got an idea in your head that you don't want to forget? Use Pen. It's an instrument used to apply ink to a surface. Usually paper. Wow, what a great idea and use our code for 44% off your first purchase. Happy Halloween, dingoes.